Good morning, this is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News with another uh, very interesting uh, set of MRI images in a patient that I saw earlier today. He's a gentleman who's uh, 37 years of age and uh, presented with uh, many years of classic symptoms of hypogonadism. Uh, was found to have a prolactin level of about 5600 as I recall and had this MRI and this shows really nice anatomy. It's a coronal image. These are the carotid arteries coming up. Back part of the sphenoid sinus here, and this is the pituitary adenoma. Here's the optic pathways. Here's the infundibulum, leading to where the normal pituitary gland has been shoved or pushed over to the, to the left side. And you can see this is a pretty sizable tumor. To make a long story short, the patient underwent uh, treatment with cabergoline, had some pituitary hemorrhage here at the time of his initial MRI, but uh, then also had hemorrhage and uh, didn't have a full return to normal of his um, prolactin level, so he underwent pituitary surgery. And this is the post-operative film showing the post-operative changes. This is packing material Here's the pituitary stalk in the normal gland, and uh, you can see this packing material here. Uh, the patient was told that uh, he wouldn't need to see the neurosurgeon or anybody else again, that he was rendered disease-free. Um, it was told that by his surgeon, but as you can see here, there is residual tumor in this region and here as well. So this patient was not rendered disease-free. Um, he um, was sent on his merry way, so to speak, and uh, thought he'd had appropriate treatment. And uh, in a matter of about six months, he had recurrent disease. And unfortunately, it took him to surgery again, and he had residual disease. And he's on cabergoline now with uh, a normal prolactin level, but significant residual tumor. Uh, as a consequence of not having had a good operation the first go-round. When I look at his initial film that I showed you just before, this is a patient who probably could have and should have been rendered disease-free with a surgical procedure, but unfortunately was not. Um, I think the thing that disappoints me most about this particular patient, though, is that uh, the surgeon uh, told the patient that he'd done a good job and that was not the case. And I think it serves as a good reminder that you want to know what your surgeon thinks about your pituitary MRI, but you also should ask your endocrinologist and get biochemical confirmation, confirmation as to whether you've had appropriate treatment. Uh, look at your radiology reports because often that radiologist is looking at the films independently of the surgeon and is not biased. Obviously the surgeons are biased when they look at the MRI, they want to do a good job and want to tell you they did a good job, even if there's a residual tumor, but the radiologist is far enough removed uh, that uh, they're gonna tell you what they see, regardless of what the surgeon thinks he accomplished. Um, unfortunately, the radiologist doesn't often have access to biochemical data. At our facility, they will actually, based on their reports, look through the chart. I can tell they've read notes uh, when they're reviewing films here. So you want people working as a team I think this uh, gentleman's case highlights the need for involvement of a pituitary center where surgeons, endocrinologists, and radiologists work together uh, to be honest about results and to give uh, a, a best recommendation for the next steps in treatment. So I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And uh, the, the, the big takeaway message here is make sure you know what your radiology report really says. Uh, and as with anything you might see on the internet, think about this in the field of medicine as well. Uh, you can most of the time believe what you hear, but you need to validate it as well uh, with uh, other sources and backup uh, reviews. So once again, Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News, have a nice day.